Hi friends, in this video we will discuss about firewall. When we listen about firewall then always some questions come in our mind. What is firewall? What are the firewall techniques? Where it is implemented in the network and how it protects a network? Okay, if we want to know the answer of these questions we have to go through a simple diagram. Please have patience. Okay, assume we have two branches here. For example, branch 1 and branch 2. They have lane. Same branch 2 also has a lane. Okay, now what we want, we want branch 1 lane should be able to communicate with branch 2 lane and branch 2 lane should be able to communicate with branch 1 lane. So what we have to perform here, yes definitely we have to perform here routing. We can use any type of routing here, we can use here static, we can use here default and we can also use here dynamic routing okay now if both branches are trusted branch 1 is also trusted and branch 2 is also trusted then there is no problem they can initiate the request we can initiate request from branch 1 to branch 2 and branch 2 to branch 1 but now assume this branch 2 which we are using here this branch 2 is not trusted this is untrusted in untrusted means it is ISP or we can say here internet so we want here that branch 1 which is our trusted network it should be able to access untrusted means when request is initiated from the trusted network it can access to untrusted but when the request comes from untrusted that should not be able to access our trusted network okay if we want to obtain this functionality we have to use here firewall question is where we will implement firewall yes the answer of this question is you can implement firewall at the place of this router we can implement firewall at the place of our edge device okay here for redundancy we can use here too okay now we want to know that what is firewall so here we can simply define firewall a single system or group of system for redundancy we can use here to firewall a system or group of systems that manage access between two or more network again I am repeating here firewall a system or group of systems that manage access between two or more network now question is how they will manage the access okay now we are talking about Cisco ASA here we are talking about okay we are talking about here Cisco ASA when we configure Cisco ASA then we define yes this is our trusted interface and this one is our untrusted interface trusted means inside and untrusted means outside to the trusted interface we gave security level 100 and to the untrusted we gave security level 0 the security level K value can be 0 to 100 default inside value is 100 and outside value is 0 okay now when the request will initiate it from the trusted network that is allowed to go outside as well as reverse reply is also allowed but when the request will initiate from the outside network that will be drop, drop at the appliance or we can see here ASA so again we can say here firewall a system or group of systems that manage access between two or more network here we can say trusted and untrusted 
trusted can access to untrusted but untrusted is not able to access here our trusted network so we have get the answer of our questions where we can implement the firewall yes at the place of age router we can implement our firewall okay how it's protects when we are talking about cisco esa we configure trusted network as well as untrusted network okay when the request is initiated from the untrusted network then can access to untrusted and reverse reply is also allowed but when the request will initiate from the untrusted network that will be dropped here and the trustworthiness is represented with the value that security level value is here you can see 0 to 100 inside by default security level 100 and outside security level is zero so this is our firewall now we want to know yes you can same thing you can see in the ppt firewall a system you can see here yes firewall is a single system or we can see here group of system okay firewall a system or group of systems that man is access between two or more network yes we are using here two network trusted and untrusted network trusted can access to untrusted but untrusted is not able to access trusted so we can also say it protects a network from external threats now we want to know which are the firewall techniques are present so they are in front of you first one is packet filtering second one is proxy server next one is stateful firewall and transparent firewall now we want to know what is packet filtering okay in packet filtering packets are filtered using access list and you can implement a variety of access list on cisco zss which is okay and routers here you can see a standard access list extended access list named access list time based access list dynamic access list reflexive access list and tcp established keyword acl okay now we want to know where we can use these acls for that we require we required a clean diagram here please have patience okay same scenario we are using here branch one that is connected with branch two branch one connected with the lane okay now here network running 192 168 1.1 192.168 1.2 192.168 1.0.1 192.168 1.0.2 here running ip 101.2 and 101.3 102.2 and 102.3 okay this is our simple network here and here we want to use standard access list so if we are talking about yes we are talking here standard access list standard acl yes the standard acl we can use here they are applied closest to the destination okay now but mostly standard access list we use for route filtering we don't used for traffic filtering okay now where we have to implement it okay assume this is our this is our source and this is our destination so when it will initiate a packet yes this packet will come in that will get out from this interface again it will in here and that will get out so what we will do standard acls are or if you are using it for traffic filtering then they are applied always closest to the destination l3 interface so closest to the destination l3 interface is this yes f0 by 0 and we will implement in the direction of out you can see here but again i am repeating standard acls are used for route filtering they are not used for traffic filtering here next access list we have used here okay if we are using here standard access list now what happened either entire packet will be allow or deny okay next example we have here extended access list okay in the same scenario what we can do we can use here extended access list here okay now what is the extended access list using extended access list you can allow or deny layer 3 layer 4 and upper layer protocols here if you are using here standard access list then what we can do yes we can allow or deny <coughs> yes we can write here now we are talking about 
extended acl extended acl are used to allow or deny layer 3 layer 4 and upper layer protocols okay if you want to allow deny layer 3 layer 4 and upper layer protocols then what we can use here yes we can use here extended access list and they are applied here closest to the source so we, if this is source and it is initiating the packet so we will always apply it in the in direction here so you can also use here extended access list again i am repeating they are used to allow deny layer 3 layer 4 and upper layer protocols and they are always applied closest to the source here okay now what we have to do here yes we have to use next access list yes name based access list so name based in name based access list you can give name to the access list okay if we are talking about here standard access list we can use number one to nine if we are using here extended hundred to one nine nine there is also extended range that is here uh, yes in standard access list we can use one three double zero two one triple nine and two thousand two two six double nine so this is also the extended range of acl here if you want to use them you can use but here number doesn't give us flexibility or we can say manageability so what we can do here yes we can use here named base access list in named base access list we can give the name for example here denying lane one to lane one icmp or whatever any name you can use here so so this named base access list is more manageable as compared to number and this named base acl can be standard or extended when you are creating you can define that this is standard and extended here so perhaps you are getting getting it okay another we can use here another access list type that is here yes that is here we can see time based access list what happened when we define any acl here or standard extended okay that is allow or deny the traffic okay if we have applied any acl here for example if we have an ali apply any acl here that will allow 24 by 7 but now we want if our organizations work 9 am to 6 pm only the traffic is allowed between two branches so here we can use here time base accessible first we will use here we will create a time range that 9 to 6 and we will apply it with standard and or we can say extended acl then it will work there definitely okay next access list we have here dynamic access list okay in dynamic acl what happens suppose this is our trusted network here and we want when the user want to access these servers which is behind the branch one okay if these users want to access these these users to want to access this server now what happened they will initiate a request so first of all we will not allow that they can directly access it to it what these client will tell net to this router we can say here they will tell net to branch one if telnet is successful then an acl will allow traffic as i have typed here the outside client first of all what they will do the outside client is not able to directly access with the access the server here they will tell net to this router we can say branch one router or r1 router if telnet session is successful then an acl will apply at this interface which will allow the traffic okay now uh, after some amount of time okay if the that connection is idle then this acl will be removed from the interface and if again client want to access again he or she has to authenticate himself or herself okay next one is here reflexive access list okay now what is reflexive access list here okay in reflexive acl assume this is our trusted network and this is our untrusted network so what happened reflexive acl if uh, this is our inside or we can say outside reflexive acls are used to allow those sessions which are initiated from inside as well as replies also allowed 
but it dropped those packets or connections which initiated from outside again i am repeating here reflexive acls are used to allow those sessions which are initiated from inside network and what happen if the request is initiated from the outside network that will drop here so these are the example of acl which we can use on cisco's routers and switches yes we have another acl type here yes tcp established keyword acl okay if we want to understand tcp established keyword acl then we required a clean diagram here please have patience same scenario we are using here branch one and branch two branch one same connected with the lane branch two is also connected with the lane okay now we are talking about here last one is tcp established keyword acl we know if we are talking about the tcp first if there is an initiator and responder first what they will send synchronization request then they will send open sync plus they will send acknowledgement and the in last one initiator will send x so this is the tcp three-way handshake in tcp if you are using here what we can say tcp established keyword acl so simply listen or understand it if you are using tcp established keyword acl then it blocks syn request in tcp connection establishment okay now it is depend on you where you want to implement okay if you will implement okay in the here we want this is our trusted and this is our untrusted so you want that outside can't access our trusted network so here simply it will send packet in here it will get me out again it will add come at this interface in so you can use tcp established keyword at this in interface in the direction of in okay when they will initiate tcp session simply first they will send send request this send request will come and what i told you in tcp connect tcp established keyword acl sin is not allowed here so when they are initiating request yes sin request will block here but when they will initiate yes they will initiate sin they will get they now if trusted client is initiating the send request with the destination then server will or pc will give the acknowledgement with synac now when this will give reply okay now so tcp established keyword acl block only send request during the connection establishment while rest of the messages are allowed so here you can say okay if request if we will allow it in the outbound and outside interface in direction then request from the outside interface option will be blocked here so they can't establish session with us okay so this was an example of here we can say access lists okay now what are the advantages yes you can see easy to implement cost effective but disadvantages are here not scalable and complex acls are hard to create and maintain